Hi guys, my name is Melissa and welcome to my channel. So today we're going to be doing the Q&A video which I've been talking about forever and I've not been doing it. So today I'm going to be answer all the questions you guys sent to me uh, regarding filmmaking and special effects. So I have quite a list here so I'm gonna like go through it, I'm gonna mark it off when I'm done with it. Okay, so if uh, the video is done and you guys have more questions, you can just like uh, put in the comments that you like want a part two and then we'll do this again and we can answer more of your questions. I did quickly browse through, through some of it and um, it seems some of them are for big filmmakers, you know, like people working on big fancy sets. I mostly do short films. But I do know how it works on a set and I do know a lot of secrets and things and I like watching movies too. So I'm hoping that I can answer like the majority of your questions at least. Uh, if I can't do it properly I'll find someone who can and I'll just bring them on here. But I'm pretty sure I'll be able to answer all of these. So uh, yeah, <laughs> let's get into it I guess. Do you offer any products or services? Oh, uh, this is actually not... Um so, do you offer any products or services? Well, uh, services, not really, no. Uh, products, I used to sell special effects products. It was like homemade products, I used them, so I decided to make a couple of it. But I also give some recipes on how you can do it yourself. But some of the things people can do themselves, so I do like making the products myself uh, instead of buying them because you know the products you buy you never know what they put into it so at least with my products I know what goes into it. I discontinued the products because I didn't get a lot of interest in that so if you guys want me to bring that back you know you can just put that in the comments and then I can just make that again because it's actually fun for me to you know make the products it's really great and I also gave them at pretty decent prices uh, the only thing I can't make is the liquid latex because the homemade ones I have, they don't really work as great as the stuff you buy. So that's the one thing that I recommend buying rather than trying to do the homemade thing. Uh, an alternative you can use here that is like wood glue. You know, if you have wood glue, you can just like uh, use that as an alternative for liquid latex. Liquid latex does work better, however. So second question, is this a school for acting or sponsor? Okay, well, no, I don't teach people. This is not a school. I'm just a filmmaker doing my own thing in the world because other people tend to stab you in the back. If you guys want me to make an entire video out of that, I will because, you know, it happens a lot. So I can definitely make an entire video on why being a filmmaker sucks, how many times you get stabbed in the back. That should be an interesting topic for a video. Uh, when will you be hiring for films? This is actually a really good question. I've been getting this one a lot. So I don't know. Uh, the COVID has really screwed everything up, literally. Uh, yeah, I don't have a budget for most of my films. I mostly use friends and family members to create my films. So yeah, I don't have the best actors and the best equipment. Uh, so if you guys want to support me on Patreon, all of that money is going to go towards um, making the viewing experience of my films better. So getting better equipment, hiring more people. So yeah, I really want to hire people, but I don't have the funds to do so. And a lot of people don't want to do it voluntarily. And it's also with the COVID, like I said, it's hard. So what I want to do is, if I get enough Patreons, I will definitely... Because I want to do a competition if we hit 1,000 subscribers here on YouTube. But if I get, like, at least, like, 500 Patreons, I guess, uh, I think that's a fair number, then I will hire people for film. Uh, if we can make it to a thousand, then I will be able to do a lot more. I will maybe try to make an entire big film, not just short films. So, yeah, <laughs> subscribe to my Patreon if you want to be in a film. Because <laughs> that's going to make it possible. How can I become an actor? Okay, well, you don't necessarily need to go through a film school. It just helps your odds a lot. If you are good at acting, you can apply to acting jobs and go for the um, auditions and then, you know, they'll determine if you're good or not. But you're really gonna have to evaluate that. I can give some acting tips and stuff, you know, in a video too, if you'd like to see 
tips on acting, things you shouldn't do in front of a director, you know, stuff like that. So you can drop that in the comments if you want me to expand on, you know, things you uh, should do as an actor or shouldn't do. But how you can become an actor, mostly just practice, you know, getting comfortable in front of a camera and, you know, like, practice. Emotions are everything, you know, so practice doing different emotions, quick changing. Uh, some people are what they call method actors, which means they mentally get into the um, the role they're playing. So they take a couple of months studying the person they, they're going to become in the film. So if you're going to play a drunk, you just watch drunk people all the time and you try to get into their mindset, kind of. Do you need to study for acting? I think I kind of like answer that. Like, no, you don't, but it helps. Um, you know, if you can get a clean break if you're really good at acting, but remember, you're gonna have to be really good because uh, I don't want to shatter anyone's dreams here. So I'm just like, oh, you said you just go for auditions. No, if you're really good, you will be able to get a role. If you're not as good as you think you are, you'll, you won't get the role. It's pretty blunt, but that's how it is. Is it hard to be a director? Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's fucking hard, okay? There's... I can't say that without cursing. It's the most stressful thing on earth, but um, yeah, it's it sucks. Uh, it sucks completely. You're like responsible for everything, and everyone hates you at the end of the day because you have to be the bad guy because you you need to make a film. You know, you're like the you know the the bitch who just likes yell at people the entire day, and. Most of the people don't like the director, but I do recommend, you know, trying to have a good relationship with your actors if you're a director. Because uh, they need to know they can come to you for advice and to talk. Uh, you know, you need to be able to bond with your actors and your crew members. So just being an utter bitch is not the job description. You're going to be under a lot of stress. You're going to have to deal with a lot of dumb people. People who can't read but they want to be an actor and then you, they need to read a script but they can't even read a post, you know, like, it's... There's not a word for the shit you go through when you're a director. Oh, <laughs> what happened to Bad Buddies and why aren't we hearing about it anymore? Oh god, I, I was afraid this was gonna come up. Uh, yeah, that's not happening anymore. Uh, I can make an entire video actually about what happened there, but I'm gonna try to break it down quickly. Uh, the thing what happened is uh, we started this in March of 2020, so that's around when the COVID hit. It was just before that hit. We um, made plans to make this movie. So the guy I was working with, he um, he was like the producer, he funded the thing. I'm not gonna be naming uh, people here. You guys know who I'm talking about if you've been following my medias. So he was gonna fund everything, he allegedly had everything ready, so I had to get actors and we you know I helped him a lot. So, you know, this went on for a good year. Uh, I went through a lot of shit as a director because I had to get everything organized. Every time I would bring up contracts, he would just like say, oh yeah, it's almost done, it's almost done. And it just never happened. So time was going by. We could have been done with the film, but no, it had, didn't happen. So then the actors were starting and the crew members were starting to ask questions. And they were like, some of them were just like leaving. They thought this was a scam, which I don't blame them. I actually think maybe it was. Uh, at least no one of us got hurt, none, none of us lost any money or anything, so that's good. But the thing is, um, yeah, so I just told him, like, my concerns that I have for the other people, because as a director, you're supposed to be the voice for everyone else on the team. So I, I contacted him, I told him, look, this can't go on like this, we have to start getting our shit you know, together we need to go and get ready because we're losing a lot of people and I don't want to have us needing to start all over again. So he was just like saying things like people are disposable, you know, we can just get near them. If they don't want to be here, they should just leave and things like that. And it was starting to piss me off because we had a lot of good talent and I didn't want to miss have them miss out on this great opportunity. I mean, they were just like really great actors. There were so much talented people there. I was, I felt honored to be working amongst so many people because most of them didn't go, go to film school. They were just really talented people. And some of them actually had really good references. So we started uh, talking about everything. 
and he just started getting uh, like meaner and meaner and irritated with me because I just wanted to get like get the show on the road and he was just like trying to delay everything more because I really think I don't really know what his end game was so yeah uh, I sent him everything that you know I had the last stuff and um, we never spoke again so that's not happening anymore uh, I don't know I still have like the script like the first draft of the script I have all of the footage that we took uh, from the auditions I have all of that uh, I have a lot of the pre-production info still so you know if I wanted to be a bitch I could really like make his life really difficult for him but the thing is I don't even think this movie was a legit thing to start with so um, I'm not even gonna bother going into this further. I just want to apologize to all of the people who were involved with this film because it really hurts me as much as it does you. I was going in the complete same boat that you guys were in and I hope you'll forgive me and someday want to work with me again because this was actually my name that was dragged through the mud as well just because of someone's incompetence. So I'm really, I apologize for it. I really hope you guys would be willing to work with me again. There were so much talented people I, I feel really bad about what happened and it really hit me hard. I was like so stressed out. I was just like, this was supposed to be my clean break as well guys. So I'm just as pissed as all of you guys were and yeah, it's just, it's not going to be a thing anymore. So if you guys want me to go more in depth, I can actually. So yeah, uh, so I think that answers that question. I don't think... I'm gonna say anything more about that right now. Okay, so next question. Do I need to pay money to be mentored as an actor and is it private? Okay, so I don't know if you're like insinuating that I mentor people. I do mentor people, people like uh, with spirituality, which is my other thing. Luckily, I have many talents. <laughs> so yeah, I do mental pe mentor people spiritually, but that's like a complete other thing. Um, doesn't involve my film stuff so I don't mentor people uh, you can go to people who do mentor you and yeah you're probably gonna need to pay for those mentoring uh, people I mean like they're giving you a service that takes a lot of their time and effort and skills so yeah you're gonna have to pay if you want something like that it can be private I know I know people who mentor in groups and people who mentor one-on-one -on -one. it kind of depends where you go I do not offer services like that. I am thinking of maybe doing something like that in the future. If you guys would be interested, uh, let me know. I really try to keep my prices good for everything I do. Um, so yeah, but I don't do that and yeah, you're not gonna get that for free, my, my guy um, or girl. <laughs> so uh, next question, where did you study film and how long did you study for? This is a fair question. Well, uh, I studied at, well, back then it was known as Bright Light Film Academy, but they changed their name. I think they're known now as Da Vinci International or something like that. Um, I studied for a year. I was going to do three years. Uh, I didn't do it because one, I didn't have the funds. Two, I did talk to the people in charge and ask them if I can just do a year and they said if I'm willing to work harder, yes, I can just study a year because the second and third year is just going to be like the same stuff. It's just going to give you more experience. So I was like, yeah, I'm a hardworking person. I'm determined. I'm motivated. I'm going to do this in a year. So uh, I did everything. The gala event was an utter disaster. I, I would go into full... Um, details about that if you want I can make an entire video on that it's partially uh, how you get stabbed in the back in the film industry so you know if you want guys want me to make a video on that you know just put that in the comments I'll definitely want to do something like that uh, I actually think it would be beneficial to talk about it to like help newbies in the industry not fall into the same crap I did um, you know you can learn out of my experiences you don't have to go through it yourselves so yeah I did study there and yeah, I didn't take the acting course though, but I do have a lot of information on acting. I'm actually not a terrible actor, I just prefer being behind the cameras than in front of it. So I'm 
This whole YouTube thing's still a little awkward to me too some days, but you get used to it eventually. And I also didn't take the uh, editing course. Apparently it's included now with the new thing they did, uh, but I didn't take that one. So my editing skills are limited, but I actually got the hang of it. I use the DaVinci programs. Um, I think DaVinci 15 and 16. It's actually pretty easy to get the hang of it. I would like to be a better editor sometimes, but I can edit enough to do my videos and do my short films. So I think I'm good. Next question, is filmmaking hard? Uh, this actually reminds me of the question that asked if directing was hard. Is filmmaking hard? Yeah, it's it's hell, it's utter hell. Uh, you have to be aware of so many things that happen and there's so many components that goes into it, you know? So on a film set, you have your your ranking, okay? So you have your actors, you have everyone behind the scenes, you have your producers, your directors, your uh, videographers, you have your editors. Your editors usually do the post work, they are not usually on the set half the time. Then you have like your sound, your lighting people, you have your technical people, the props, the um, set makers, you have your wardrobe, your makeup, your special effects. There's just so many people. Um, it's hard to keep track of everyone, but as a director you need to be aware of every single person there. You need to make sure they do their job correctly. So, as a director you need to know how to do everything. So it's, it's hard. It's um, utter hell to make a film, but it's worth it in the end. If people actually work well together, it's easier, I find. I also like the short films because I get to do everything, you know, behind the scenes I'm I do everything. So I literally just have to worry about the actors. So um, it helps me because I get shit done faster. But when you're working with a team, you know, not everyone's working on the same pace you're, you're at, so it gets difficult. Okay, so why are big professionals so undermining? So a lot of big professionals in the industry is incredible undermining to their people. Um, they want to profit because they only want to make their bank accounts bigger and they don't care uh, what they have to do to get there. They will throw you under the bus, they see you as disposable, a lot of the same crap that happened with me and Bad Buddies. I was stabbed in the back like like about five times in the film industry, I can make an entire video out of it. But they're very undermining sometimes. I don't know why I think money goes to your head because money doesn't make you a bad person. There's a lot of very rich people that does good in the world. Money just brings out the real you, and most people are sadly very um, effed up people, so um, money doesn't change you, it just brings out who you truly are deep inside, and most people are the type of people, uh, when they get a lot of money, they start seeing people as objects, not people, and they just want to get richer, they don't care what it's going to cost, they just want to get richer. They don't care who gets poorer in the process. It's like that system. Rich people get richer, poor people get poorer, and they don't give people a shot. They're just... They just want to use you because you're useful for now. As soon as you're not useful anymore, they throw you away like a piece of meat, like, on the side of a road. They just... toss you. Okay, so next question, because this is getting depressing. I really want to work with you. How can I be part of your films? Okay, so that kind of goes with the question people ask if uh, when I'm hiring people. So like I said, uh, <laughs> subscribe to my Patreon. The more Patreons I get, the more is the likelihood that I'll hire people. So if you really want to work with me and, you know, maybe like audition for me as a crew or a cast member and have the opportunity to work with me, you're gonna have to help me get there because you know, it's like, you help me, I help you. That's the way things are supposed to work. Because I never forget people. You know, if you help me, if you're loyal, you stuck with me, everything, I will definitely make sure that you, you know, you get something out of it. I'm not one of those undermining big professionals. I think I'd rather uh, jump in front of a bus before I treat someone like that. Okay, next question. Can I learn more about your background? 
Uh, sure, I guess. Uh, my background, uh, let's see, my life has not been the easiest of things. Uh, I haven't uh, had things easy ever. Uh, my childhood was kind of uh, lonely. I had a brother that was disabled and yeah, uh, school was utter hell. I was bullied a lot. I was always different. Uh, got another brother also disabled. My first brother died. Uh, then my grandma died and then I got into horse riding. My horse died. Um, everyone just around me just seemed to die. I went through a lot of trauma, abusive relationships and um, sexual abuse, uh, stuff like that. And um, eventually I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was going to be like, uh, okay, I want to be a, uh, a vet. Then when I had to, my horse died, I decided I can never put an animal out or anything. So I love animals too much. So I was just going to give that a skip. Then I wanted to go into psychology. Didn't have the money to go and study that. So I ended up settling for a film. Uh, don't know if it was a good choice or not. Uh, yeah, I found the love of my life, got engaged. Uh, marriage are delayed because of lack of money, because none of us can get a job. Uh, the whole pandemic thing made everything worse. It delayed everything. And work in this country is impossible at the moment. Literally, there's so much unemployment. You know, South Africa, for those of you who don't know, um, it sucks living here, okay? So that, that's just a little bit about my freaking background. I don't really know what you want to know, but that's like what I've been through in a very, very short version because going into it in detail is, um, it's, it's painful, okay? So I'll link a video that I did on my other channel down below about some trauma crap I went through if you're really interested in seeing that. Yeah, I am into spirituality things as well. That's what the other channel's about. I am a spiritual person. Uh, so yeah, directing wasn't always my first choice. Um, where are you based? South Africa. The worst country we can probably be in for filmmaking. That's where I'm at. Filmmaking, hearing, it's a bitch. We don't even have proper CGI. Like, it's just... It's ridiculous. You you don't get jobs here. It sucks. Like I want to go to um, to Canada. It's whether there's better people there is nicer. There's less pollution. It seems very nice over there. I want to go there. I want to live in Canada. Really want to live there. I don't want to live here. This country sucks. Uh, so yeah, don't like where I'm at. Uh, what kind of films do you do? This is an interesting question. Uh, you can check out my short films on this channel, though. Uh, like, I like horror, mostly. Um, horror is like my number one thing. Uh, I'm fascinated with horror films. Uh, I also do a couple of like psychological ho horrors and thriller type things. Uh, I like making films to raise awareness about topics I think are important. I did one, I uh, did two actually on suicide awareness. Uh, the next one I kind of want to do is uh, like domestic violence awareness. So uh, you guys can look forward to that. This is actually my, my cousin's gonna help me with this film. It was his idea. Uh, I thought it was a really great idea. He's gonna help me. He's gonna like, I'm gonna like hand the ropes to him and just guide him and we're gonna make that film uh, soon. And I'm also gonna make a couple of more horrors. I uh, also like dark comedy, specifically dark comedy. Um, my first film was a dark comedy, so I really enjoy that. Uh, comedy itself is also great, but I don't think I'm that funny, so um, I guess dark comedy is a little bit more of my sense of humor. And also certain dramas. I've written a couple of synopsises on dramas, uh, but mostly it's to raise awareness for causes. Like, especially, like, cheating, because that's a really big thing nowadays, so I really want to, like, raise awareness to what that actually do to people, and, uh, you know, what's the consequences of your actions, so I kind of want to do something like that. Uh, next question. What's your future film plans? I think I kind of answer that right now. Like, kind of. That's what I'm planning. Planning to make short films on YouTube until I'm famous and rich and then we're gonna make big films and we're gonna go to Canada maybe and 
we're just gonna have fun. So that's that's my plan, I guess. Patreon first, guys. Go support me over there. Okay. Next question. Are you currently working on any films? If you are, can you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, I kind of did a little bit now. I, like I said, me and my cousin's gonna do a uh, awareness film on about domestic violence. I want to do a little horror again with my other cousin. She's made an appearance in a couple of my films, uh, like Not My Daughter and Baby Doll. So I definitely want to um, do another one with her and her friends before they get too old. Um, because kids grow, like they grow like weeds. Like you think they're like just little thing now and next day they're like huge. So I want to do another horror with them. It's going to be like this thing about uh, like this Grim Reaper, Angel of Death kind of vibe. I uh, almost kind of have a little undertone of like it, you know, like the clown thing. But this is not a clown. This is going to be Grim Reaper thing, okay, Angel of Death. But the, the principle of it's going to be like a group of teenagers or young early teens, you know, young, young children that uh, is in the small town. There's like this legend in the town. Um, and then they, uh, you know, investigate. So I'm not gonna give away too much, but that's the the moral base of what I'm gonna do. Um, I have a lot of other synopsises that I want to do, but those are the two that I currently am planning to actually do. Uh, so we'll see how far I get with those, and then we'll go further. Next question. Are you from a film institute? No, uh, I'm not really from any place. I work for myself because the only person who's going to look after you is you, okay? You're the only person who's going to take care of you, trust me. No one else is ever going to care. So it's better to work for yourself, to try and make a name for yourself. Uh, so no, I, I don't want to really work for an institute or an organization or... Um, Whatever. I don't want to work for a big production company or anything, and I don't, so uh, maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. You know, if I actually get a call like, hey, do you want to direct for us? And it's not a scam, and people who stab me in the back like five times. It was actually a legit thing, and I, I can work for someone, um, and the circumstances are decent, then I might do it. Um, so, yeah. Next question Can you tell us a bit about what it's like to make a film? Oh god, I think I did a question that's like almost similar to this. Um, sucks. It's hell. Yeah, that, that, that's it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll tell you a little more about it. Um, your pre-production is supposed to be as long as the actual production. So if you're planning to shoot for, say, six months, then the pre-production is also going to be six months. So then you're already at 12 months of production. Post-production is usually a little faster than the pre and the uh, during production phases. Uh, so the post is mostly where the editing and stuff takes place. So it's the editing, if you want CGI, crap like that. So that's post-production. Pre-production is all your planning. You have to get the people, the cast, the crew. You have to get the script, the wardrobe, the props. You have to get the location. You have to get everything. And then when everything is ready, you can actually go to the location. You're probably going to work shitty hours, early mornings, late nights, night shoots. Um, it's going to suck. You're going to sacrifice your sanity. Some days you're going to work like 20 hours a day. It's, it's rough in the film industry. Sometimes you actually have to sleep on set because, um, you know, you can't go home. There's no time. You know, you have deadlines, you have uh, schedules, and it's so easy to run behind schedule. It's so easy. You can lose track of time. This take just doesn't want to work out, and you have to redo the take. It, it also gets frustrating, uh, you know, having to do the same thing over and over again. Because you see the film just like you see it. You hear everything once. When you're making a film, you have to hear the same thing. So let's say, for example, we're at a table, there's a family, and the one person says, Mom, pass the bread, please. You have to hear that like 
freaking 90 times because you have to see it from this angle, then a close-up, then from that angle. And then it's just like, Mama, can, I, can, can you please pass the bread? Mama, can you please pass the bread? It's like an over, over loop. It literally feels like your brain's going to explode at times. Like, I'm not even kidding. It's It sucks. It's not really great for the actors, too, because they literally have to say the same thing over and over again, and they have to make it sound the same the, every time. So... It's frustrating, it's hard, it's not <laughs> it's not the funnest thing. Watching the films are better because as a filmmaker you want to tell a story and you want to do it really good. The visual it's visually telling a story. So also there's a lot of messages in silence. So when the scene's just silent and the actor is just kind of having the moment. You know, sometimes those speak louder than the scenes that people actually speak. So and angles, oh my god. I watch some low budget films and I'm like those angles, bro. I'm not a professional. Like, I'm not the best person in the industry. I'm pretty sure some of my short films kind of suck a little. But the angles, bro, you can do so much better. I mean, I try. You guys can do more. You have a budget because you actually had that film made and released and, like, verified and everything. Why couldn't you do more with those angles? It's just, like, it's mind-blowing. Okay, so I am interested in acting. What do I do? Uh, go to Facebook or Google and search for auditions coming up in your area. Go see if you can find some groups and pages on Facebook on film making, film acting, things like that. You can you can go there. You can go ask. You know, hey, I'm this I'm this age. This is my height. Blah blah blah. Um. I want to be in a film or you can just watch for a similar description than what you look like and then you can go to the auditions just make sure you practice safety when you go to auditions you know always tell people where you're at go uh, with someone if you can just be safe please but yeah that's practically what you do uh, how are you doing so this is just someone and they just wanted to say hi how you just want to ask how I am. <sighs> Let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I'm a little stressed. Um, you know, there's some, like, health concerns I've had. This pandemic is becoming ridiculous. Um, it's a pain in the ass. Uh, we can't get jobs anymore. I'm not making zero dollars at the moment. You know, I have an entire room filled with... Um, you know, like boxes filled with uh, things that I want to start making my own house with. You know, it's like plates and cups and kettles and freaking, you know, just things you start a home with. And they're just there in boxes because I can't go anywhere anymore. I can't move out like I planned to. Um, I can't get married. I can't do anything. So yeah, it's frustrating. So I'm doing decent. I'm trying. We're just all trying to keep our head above water and just keep swimming. Just like, you know, like Dory. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. What do we do? We swim. We try. So, yeah. Uh, next question. What do we do if we want to support you further? Oh, I think I also kind of answered that. Um, the biggest support you can give me at the moment is on on my Patreon. Now my Patreon is mostly for like uh, my spiritual channel because that's more of my main channel. So the packages are kind of like spirituality. But if you're not interested in spiritual content, then you can just um, you know take the the cheapest plan, and then you can just like uh, because the spiritual insight I give is actually kind of like useful. Okay, but if you're against it, you don't have to. If you want to like give me like donations or anything, you can contact me on one of my medias or whatever and you know you can like donate um money if you want to support me you know if you don't want to subscribe to my patreon if that's not for you if you just want to donate a set amount of money you can donate that i promise you it's going to go towards filmmaking and for me to hire you guys um that want to act in my film um preferably people from south africa unless i have enough money to bring you here or if you have money to come here but i'm thinking more people in south africa because um it's just gonna be easier for everyone uh but i really do want to hire you guys so also you can go follow me on tiktok on instagram on facebook i will link everything down below and yeah you can just like watch my content comment like you know 
uh, on TikTok, you can go like and comment on my posts there. It'll help so much if you just like, like and uh, comment on my posts on my different medias. Uh, so yeah, that's a couple of ways that you guys can support me further if you want to. Do you have any other medias we can follow you at? Uh, yeah, like I said, most of you only know about my YouTube and my Facebook, right? So, so I don't want to mention my Instagram and my TikTok is basically just me, myself and I having fun. It's, it's more where I just am myself. So, um, you know, you can just, uh, follow me. I also post things related to my other two channels on there. So yeah, I'll link those down below um, as well. My one channel is my spiritual channel. Now for that channel, I have a YouTube channel and a Facebook page for that channel. And then I have this fun random channel where I literally just wanna like, um, you know, screw around, you know, have fun, do gaming content, uh, post stuff about my animals, just random videos, just fun, relax, because this channel and my other channel, uh, spiritual channel, does get a little stressful sometimes. So I just want to like a wind down channel, you know. So you got, that also has a, a YouTube channel and a Facebook page. So I have three YouTube channels, three Facebook page where you can follow me at Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon. My Patreon is mostly for the spiritual channel. It's, it's for all of my channels, but the main channel that I have is my spiritual channel. This is the second channel, and then the third channel is the fun channel. So you guys can go follow me over on any of those. You can also go follow my fiance if you're really into gaming content. He does uh, really funny gaming. He's hilarious sometimes. I actually want to do a collab maybe with him in the future uh, on my uh, fun channel. Okay, so it's called Things and Stuff and Stuff and Things. My spiritual channel is called Crystal Intuition. Uh, so yeah, we, we want to do some gaming content together. Um, but he's also really, really funny and uh, he plays a lot of cool games. He's open for requests if you want him to play a specific game. If he has it, if he can afford it, you'll get it and he'll play it. It's also really funny watching him play horror games because he scares a little easier than me. <laughs> if I play a horror game, it's gonna be boring, I guess. Because I don't get scared. But yeah, that's where you can follow me at. Uh, you can also go follow my mom if you want, if you speak Afrikaans, because she posts in Afrikaans. She raises awareness about life with children with disabilities because I had two brothers who had disabilities. One passed away, but the other one still, he's, he's alive um, and well. Uh, he is having a lot of concerns because he cannot go for any of his treatments because of the pandemic. So he can't really go to hospitals because he can get sick really easily and my mom don't want to expose him to, you know, risk him getting sick of the virus because he will die because he's really weak at the moment. So life with children with those conditions, you know, what's it like? He has cerebral palsy. My brother who passed away had infantile baton disease. So you guys can go follow. It's really interesting to learn more about it. And also she talks a little bit about how it influences other family members, like how it influenced me. Maybe she'll get me on her channel sometime and then I can tell my experiences about what my life was like with my brothers because it was, it's hard sometimes. Okay. So, next page. <laughs> next question. How does the COVID impact the film industry? Uh, with a big punch to the face, yeah. So, the this whole pandemic's influencing the film industry a lot. Everything has been delayed. Films that should have been out last year only came out this year or they're coming out next year. My favorite series are delayed now. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hate this. Like, this whole pandemic is ridiculous. Like... Everything's delayed. The film industry, I mean, the film industry, you, you're constantly around very large groups of people. So it's really difficult to be able to get anything done, especially when it's now law to wear a face mask. You cannot wear a freaking face mask when you're acting. You can't even wear it like when you're not filming because you're gonna smudge your makeup, you're gonna screw up your hair. It's, it's just not possible for the actors to wear masks. So it's really difficult. And I mean, then you get like your kissing scenes and things like that, which is a little bit more uh, intimate. And then, you know, if someone's sick, that's just gonna be a disaster. So it's not impacting any business well, let alone the film industry. How stressful is it when something goes wrong on set? Uh, you feel like you wanna... You feel like a chicken whose head got cut off. You're just running around screaming. That's what you feel like. But you don't 
do that because you have to remain calm and figure out a rational solution. But inside you're just going insane. Outside you're just like, how are we gonna fix this? Okay, let me think that can maybe work. Yeah, so outside you appear calm, inside you're going crazy. It's really stressful when something goes wrong on set because you are working on tight schedules and times, so it does impact you a lot. Okay, so what are famous people like on set? Uh, okay, I've never personally worked with a famous person on a movie set. I've met a couple. My lecturer was also, um, he was an actor who played in some films as long as, uh, as well as some of the other uh, lecturers and mentors um, at the film school I was at. So, some of them were really nice. I, I'm really have to say most of them, the majority, ma the majority of them are really nice in person. Some of them are really um, not nice. They seem like they're gonna be nice, but they're not. On set, they are a little different because a lot of them, like if they're method actors, you cannot communicate to them much because they need to remain in character. Some of them, most of them are really professional. Some of them do goof off and things a lot, but it's funny if someone screws up and we can just laugh, laugh it off and just go on, you know? So most of them are really, really nice on set. They try to help other people. There's some of them who's a little like stuck up, like I'm better than you. I don't care what you're doing. You just do it right. Cause, oh, I did this take perfectly. So, you know, you screwed up. So now I have to do this ever again. So some of them are a little high maintenance like that, but most of them are really nice. They're just people, you know? So the stuck up ones fame clearly went to their head. Does the type of film affect your budget? Yeah, I'd say it does because horror films generally have more CGI and things needed in them. CGI is expensive. It's really hard to do, and so it's expensive. So it's gonna be um, higher budget. Then you get fantasy type of films, like especially like this new Cruella movie. Oh, I loved it. It was great. But the CGI and the effects and things in that film, and not to even speak of the wardrobe, which was stunning, I assume that film's budget, I mean, you can probably Google it, that budget has to have been insane, you know? Most Disney films actually have very high budgets. I mean, then you get like Pirates of the Caribbean, which takes place in a different era, anything, or even like that Bridgerton series or things like that, anything that takes place in a different time era would obviously cost a lot more to make. Um, because, you know, you have to buy wardrobe, you have to make the sets look old and from a different time period. So the type of film really depends. I mean, if I make a film in the modern era, it's going to be cheaper than doing one in like a, like a very older era. So it does affect it. Action films also with the boom boom explosions and shooting guns, what well, it's cost, it costs a lot more. Um, and they also have to get a lot of stunt doubles in those type of films because the actors don't want to get hurt. There are actors that does their own stunts, like I think Johnny Depp does his own stunts. Um, there's a couple of them that does their own stunts, so, you know, but if the uh, actor gets injured, then it's a very big uh, issue. I mean, I've heard uh, The Witcher, that series, the guy who plays uh, Geralt, uh, I mean, the film got, the, the new episodes got delayed, uh, the new season got delayed because of the pandemic, and then it got delayed again because the um, actor who played Geralt injured his foot. I believe it was on set, but it could have been, like, offset, you know, like, at a personal event or thing, but he hurt his foot and then they couldn't shoot um, further, they had to wait for his foot to heal, so it does affect it a lot. How long does it take to make a film? Uh, it takes a long time. Like I said, it depends on the type of film, uh, and pre-production is has to be as long as the actual production, and then there's post-production. So most films take around a year, at least, to make. Um, that's the average. I'd say some take uh, a little bit less, some, some takes a lot more time. Especially, like, to take a movie for Avatar, as example. That film would maybe take two years or so to make, because it's really hard, um, you know, the whole creation of the thing. Uh, when is the most of your work done on a film? Pre, post, or during production? I'd say pre-production. I think the most work is done in pre-production. Um, it actually depends on the film, to be honest, but for me personally, 
most work takes place in pre-production. It's the most work. During production, you know, everyone can work together, so it's a little easier to get things done. Post-production is also not, um, you know, you just need to edit. It. Editing is really hard, by the way. Uh, it's like putting a very complicated puzzle together, so it's it's not easy. But I think the most work would I, I would say in generally I'd say pre-production. Do you have to be trained to be an actor? No, you don't have. I think we had this question before. You don't have to, but it helps. How do you get animals to act on set? Uh, you don't. <laughs> it's just like kids too. You can't always have them act exactly how you want. So you have to train them, okay? So you have to uh, explain them, prepare uh, them for that. Animals, you have to take them to a training school. Some people just use CGI, like the new Cruella movie. They didn't use real dogs. Well, it didn't look like real dogs. I, I believe they used CGI and not real dogs, which is more expensive, but you get the animals to do what you want. How long does it take to apply costumes, makeup, especially special effects? Uh, a freaking long time. Uh, some don't take that long, but some actors have to come in like six hours before the actual shooting starts just to get their special effects and things done. I know when they made uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, that guy who uh, played Freddy Krueger, you know, I, Robert England, he had to come in, I think it was like eight hours before they started shooting, just to apply his freaking makeup. And afterwards, it's a whole process to get that crap off again. And, you know, there was this story about one time he had his prosthetics just put on. And they were hungry, so they went out to a little restaurant to get food. And this one woman in the restaurant literally, she, she jumped up, she screamed, and she stabbed herself committing suicide in the place because she thought Freddy Krueger was coming for her. But the guy couldn't take off all his makeup before going, but it just took, like, six, eight hours to put on. And I mean, you can just take it off and just go to eat quickly. It's... It's really, it takes, some takes a long time. I can do cut wounds and things really quickly, but it depends. How long is the film compared to the original script? Oh, okay, this is actually a really good question. Because sometimes we actually cut the script a lot. We have to cut out pieces. So a film is generally between an hour and two hours in length. Sometimes the script is longer. So it depends. I'd say you use at least 80% of your script in film. Sometimes you use around 60. It depends on the length of your film. Sometimes you shoot, because the thing is you shoot a lot more footage than you actually use. So at the end of the day, you have to cut out a lot. You know, you also add a lot in the script. Your script's never finished. You add on new things all the time. What do you do if you have to sneeze or use the bathroom while shooting? Um, do it. You, you know, you just do it. Or you just ask the director, I'm just gonna go pee quickly, okay? Uh, if you sneeze, you sneeze. They, you're just gonna have to do a retake, but, you know, you don't have to be like... <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't have to, like, try to keep it in. You can just, like, sneeze. You know, if you're busy in a take and you sneeze, they just do a retake. It's, it's not the end of the world. Is workplace romances forbidden? Uh, no, I don't believe most of the time they are, I, I think they're not, you know, I don't, I can't think of anyone who ever said it was forbidden on set. It's not encouraged, you know, that you hanging around kissing someone on set. Uh, you have to get your job done, but you know, if you like date someone on set, you know, that's fine. Uh, you know, your personal life is your own business. Uh, what do you do if one of your actors are sick? Uh, wait or get a replacement. Uh, I think that's generally what you do. Uh, sometimes you're just gonna have to wait for them to get better. Sometimes you have to like, get a replacement. But it does take a lot of, um, you know, stress to, you know, fix everything. What do you do if your actor gets pregnant while making a film? Okay, well, luckily pregnancies. Uh, they take a while before they show, okay? So most of them you can actually just um, shoot while they're pregnant. Uh, I also know about like sometimes a woman is pregnant while shooting a film but they hide her pregnancy. Uh, you can actually go Google that. There, I saw a lot of interesting videos on YouTube about the same topic. About women, like I think, um, what was it, uh, Black Widow? No, uh, Scarlett Johansson, she was actually pregnant while shooting uh, one of the films. So, uh, you, you don't see that on camera, you know, they can hide it. There's, there's a lot of actors that were pregnant on set, you can hide it. 
Are certain props real or are they fake? Uh, most of them are fake. It's encouraged for them to be fake. It's the point of a prop. Uh, they do sometimes use real things in like films. I know in uh, some films they use real skeletons because the fake ones look too fake. Um, so there are sometimes where they re use real things instead of fake, but with guns and knives and things, they always use fakes. Are there real sets or are all of them fake? No, there are real real sets. I shoot in real houses, um, but most set sets in like Hollywood and stuff are actually built sets. They actually build an entire house just for a movie, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it can be a real place. It doesn't have to be uh, fake, but most of the time it is um, not a real place. What happens to props and sets and wardrobe after filming? Well, the sets, half of the time, they either keep them in like a wardrobe in a, a warehouse thing or they break them down so if they're planning to make sequels they'll keep it but sometimes they just break them down sometimes they will store them um if it's a real place you just you know just clean it up and leave wardrobe and props um sometimes the wardrobe gets reused for different films or if it's a specific designer they like take it or whatever sometimes they take it apart again sometimes actors gets to keep it props too sometimes they just throw it away sometimes the actors gets to keep things i know like supernatural like jensen ackles uh that played um dean he actually got to keep the actual car that they used which was pretty cool um is it awkward to be naked on set or to kiss someone or to do love making scenes yeah yeah well um yes it's awkward uh it's something that I, I assume you're gonna have to get used to if you want to do something like that. It's not just something anyone can do. It's it's really um it's it's not a great thing, okay? Like it's it's awkward, it's it's not yeah, we're you're just gonna leave it there. It's not uh great. Okay, it's not like oh I can just do this. If you're really confident maybe you can, you know, do it better, I don't know. Are weapons and foam real or fake? Like I said, uh, weapons and knives, guns, anything, they're usually always fake. Uh, I've never heard of them using real ones in movies. Uh, I've heard about sabotage, where someone accidentally gets shot in something with a real gun, which was swapped with the props, but you should be able to notice the difference. How do you get over your fear of acting? Uh, practice, uh, you know, in a mirror, in front of camera, get confident. Uh, just remember, everyone's human, you know, just make yourself comfortable. So that's all of the questions, guys. Uh, if I, if you want me to answer some of them more in depth, put that in the comment. If you have more questions, put that in the comments down below, you know, tell me. Make another one and we'll do it. So I hope I answered most of your questions uh, that you guys had. Thank you guys for sending me in your questions. This video was very interesting. So I'll see you guys in a next video, uh, whenever that would be. You can check out all my medias, everything will be in the links down below. Bye guys!